I know what you're thinking. I look rather fine in this wonderful attire. Well, the reason being is I'm gonna look over the car completely now, looking for problem areas. And for general things to look for, make sure you watch the videos in the tabs above. You're gonna need your torch, you're gonna need axle stands, and you're gonna need a trolley jack as well, because once you've looked over the entire car, the paintwork, the bodywork itself, the engine, the boot, under the carpet, you're then gonna go underneath the car to have a look at the chassis. As mentioned in the what to look for video, run the flat of your hand over the body, feeling for any bumps or ripples. Also, use your magnet to check for filler. Open the bonnet and at the same time, listen for any metal crunching. This sound indicates the bonnet mounts could be on their way out. It should be a nice, smooth motion. When fully open, look at the support arms and the bonnet mounts themselves. You want those to be nice and strong. The last thing you want is the bonnet coming down like some sort of guillotine when inspecting or working in the engine bay. Whilst in the engine bay, ensure the engine isn't hot. And if it's running, be careful of that metal fan as it constantly rotates. Check the inside and on top of the front wheel arches. Look for damage or rust. Then look over the entire bonnet, paying careful attention to the back of the lights and grill. Now, even though if the lights are a bit rusty, it's not a hard job, but water and electrics never go well. Inspect the bonnet catches, as these are prone to rust, and as the front section of the Herald is one complete panel, it can be expensive to replace or fully respray. This is a great time to check that the chassis number and the engine number are all correct with the paperwork. You can locate the chassis number on the engine block and find the engine number on the left-hand side of the car just below the battery. Look at the wheels for even wearing tread. All the joints need to be greased up. Any play where the stub axle meets the trunnion could indicate that the two are gonna soon part company. Check over the hoses. Now these are easy and cheap to repair, but it's still an afternoon's work. See if any oil has sprayed around the engine block itself or even under the bonnet. Again, it's not the end of the world, but it's always best to know these things before buying. Floor pans rust, especially on convertibles. If possible, pour some water onto the roof and watch for any that may enter the car. Now, most convertibles leak, but it gives you a better indication where the rust might be forming, especially if it's behind the interior trim. Now, if you suspect rust is behind the door card or the trim itself, remove a couple of screws and have a look. If you are looking at buying a convertible, make sure you open and close the hood. Now, as it's done by standing at the side of the car, it can cause stress on the metal framework itself, which then causes it to break. Also, look to see if the hood is a good fit. If water is getting into the front of the car, it tends to collect around the pedals, and this can cause the accelerator pedal to break away entirely at the bottom, something which is less than helpful when you're driving. Again, lift the carpet, have a nosy around, be sure to look into the back too. The sills on the side of the car are just bolt-on cosmetic covers, but the side chassis rail underneath them is prone to rot. Push down on them and listen for any crunching. Do the same on the steel step trim plate. If in doubt, get your screwdriver back out, remove a couple of screws, remove it and have a better look. Rear wings tend to rust just where they meet the inner arches and in the seam that separates the upper and lower panels. Before you go under the car, ensure that it is safe and stable. But once under there, it's a great time to have a closer inspection at those side chassis rails which run down both sides of the car. Now also, pay careful attention to the outriggers. These can be found coming off the middle and each end of the side chassis rail itself. Be on the lookout for bad welding and not forgetting to feel on top of the chassis itself. It's a tight old squeeze for your fingers, but it's worth it. Poke about wherever you can get your fingers in. If something feels loose, try and remove it. It could just be a lump of mud. Then have a look to see if it's metal. There are drainage holes in the chassis and these should be clear of any debris. You want any water getting into the chassis to be able to drain out. And being a box frame chassis means it was prone from rotting from the inside out. Whilst you're under there, have a good look at everything. Now, I understand lots of people aren't mechanically minded. So if you want to give yourself peace of mind, you can always get a company to do an inspection for you. Or even if you just want to do a number plate check on it, you can do that and the buyer shouldn't mind. So now you've looked at the car, decision time. Do you want it or not? 